Well, here we go again. This is a uh, chain hoist I picked up a while ago. I don't actually know where I got it from, but uh, yeah, I was cleaning out the barn and found it and said, hey, I need to see if I can get that working. So it looks pretty clapped out. I mean, there's a lot of slop in this thing. Um, screws missing. Um, I think it sort of maybe works, but uh, there's not much going on right there. So we'll see if we can uh, get this thing tore apart and, uh, you know, see if it can't be brought back to life. One ton. Yeah, there's some pretty hefty gears in there. Hmm. Looks fairly solid built. Popped off a little circ clip here. Holds on this handle. This is sort of, sort of starting to come apart, but it's being stubborn. Huh. It's got like a uh, um, spiral cut uh, bronze ramp in there. Kind of the same thing on this handle. Yeah, a little bit more than meets the eye going on inside there. Well, there's the inside of the uh, switching mechanism. Yeah, it's pretty grungy. We'll clean that all up and uh, hopefully this goes back together um, without forgetting any parts. It's like that whole uh, gear's made out of bronze. That's pretty cool. Alright, well the gear came out of there and uh, boy, she's dry as a bone. So it's going to definitely uh, help it out putting some grease in. Alright, we're in. I'm not sure if that's like a break or uh, just a clicker of some sort. Yeah, it must be a break. At this point, everything's just kind of sliding apart. Uh, there's a couple of like friction discs. I'm sure they're probably like asbestos or something, so we'll, uh, we won't breathe that. So that's the main cross shaft, and uh, that's the little pinion gear over there, and that gives you your gear reduction. Huh. Old number three. I've kind of always liked old number seven. Well, at this point, I'm not really sure how we're going to get the rest of it apart, so uh, we're going to start knocking off these other C-clips and uh, see if we can't get something to go. So the main gear came off. And that let us get down to these pins. There's two pins holding this uh, little block in here. So we're driving them out. So at this point you've got the uh, triangular, like uh, the chain dog that grabs the chains. I'm sure there's a name for that. And I think this whole portion here is slightly larger than that. So that whole thing's going to drive out to that way, I think. Now looking at this one, there's a washer on this side of the gear so you can't push it through that way this has to come out this way however that's not going through there I mean gonna need a lot bigger press than that anyways so I started cleaning off this gunk here with a pick and I was like wondering what the heck there's a little check ball in there that actually comes out of there so get a magnet there's the check ball and it looks like that's actually what retains I think this is a sleeve that'll actually slide off uh, that shaft man I can't believe how much uh, work went into putting this thing together yeah nothing the air hammer can't uh, work on it's taking quite a few hits but it's starting to move through there so you can see we've uh, got some play Well, we might have got a little bit aggressive with the air chisel. Uh, we kind of drove this key into the housing a little bit and made a, uh, a little groove, but we'll just call that a custom oiling groove and uh, move on. So we're at the point now where we can actually get this thing to come out to the side. 
um, we just got to get the chain out of it. Unfortunately, they put this nice little ring here so that it can't go up through here and uh, I guess drop something on the floor. Well, that brings us to the other end of the chain because I really don't want to cut that loop off if I don't have to. So, uh, there's a split line. Looks like two halves to this type of coupling. Other split line there. I'm guessing this is a collar. We probably gotta like split this or break it free and move it up and then maybe we can get the chain out of here. Um, yeah, learning about chain and rigging today. So that's why these expeditions are always fun. So after beating on this thing for a while with the hammer, uh, we dislodged a lot of the dirt that's been in there for decades. Found this little retaining ring. I bet you we pop that out and uh, this outer sleeve will probably slide up and maybe we'll be home free. Alright, well finally. Surprisingly enough, it's actually roller bearings in there. I thought this was for sure going to be like a uh, just a straight bushing or something. But no, it's actually got bearings. It's a, must have been a pretty decent quality one. Well, it turns out that I kind of screwed up a little bit when I was trying to drive out that shaft. When that key punched in there and made that divot, it actually uh, broke out the side retaining wall for those bearings. You see the little bearings got that little uh, tit on there that keep them from falling out. And uh, yeah, we kind of screwed that up and dented the bottom side. And the rollers aren't rolling. So we're going to have to fudge something. So while we sort of straightened out that uh, bearing retainer, you know, side uh, lip there, ended up losing one of the bearings, dropped it on the floor, spent a while looking for it, couldn't find it. So next best thing is we're just going to add a little uh, a dead a dead roller down in there to act as a spacer to keep all the other rollers, um, you know, perpendicular to the shaft and keep them rolling. Well, to do that, we're going to need a roller that's slightly smaller diameter, and uh, that way it's not taking any pressure, it's just acting as a spacer. So I found a piece of copper wire, and uh, we filed down the ends, made a little uh, dummy roller, throw that in there as a spacer, and uh, yeah, nobody will ever know. Yeah, like it never even happened. Well, we got the main shaft back in. Everything rolls nice and smooth. It's all greased up. It's got to start reassembling everything else. And bam, there it is. Still a little bit, uh, got some slop in the handle there, but I think that's just the way it's going to be. Uh, it actually clicks in the gear and uh, sort of works if I can do it with one hand. So yeah, everything works. The, uh, the free spool, you can, um, it's got free spool, and uh, the brake does work, it's just kind of odd how you uh, engage it and stuff, but yeah, so uh, there it is. So there it is. You know we're giving it a workout lift in this thing. So advantage number 228 to uh, owning an old truck. Most body repairs can be done with a 2x4.